Hello, and welcome. I'm Megaloid, and I just felt like starting a YouTube channel, so here we are. I'll mostly be drawing and talking about media, maybe eventually I'll do video essays or let's plays, but for today I'm just going to talk about one of my favorite movies and doodle the main characters. Now this is honestly one of my top films. I've seen it at least 25 times. I consider it my comfort movie, and I have a whole lot of thoughts on it. Eventually I'd like to do a proper essay, but for now I'm just going to sort of stream of consciousness this thing. The movie is... The Nut Job. You may be wondering... Why? Why? Why, why is that? Why? And that's a valid question. The main reason it's my comfort film is because it's just so chill. Like, honestly, it's just the right amount of boring for me. Even during the action scenes, I just feel relaxed while I watch it. But the reason I have so many thoughts on it is because of its underlying critique of capitalism and our modern society. Yes, bear with me. For a brief plot summary, Surly Squirrel and Buddy the Rat, who is just called Buddy, but I call him Buddy the Rat for reasons, so just get used to that, are thieves living in a park. The rest of the animals in the park try to collect food for winter and share what they have, but Surly and Buddy the Rat take things for themselves. The definition of thief gets a little vague in this movie because they steal from humans, but... The other park animals also steal from humans. I think the main problem is that they don't share what they get. Anyway, there's also a raccoon named Raccoon, who's the leader of the park and controls their rations. More on him later. Through wacky hijinks, the park's supply of food is destroyed and Surly gets banished to the city. He finds a nut shop, plans a heist, the park joins him in the heist, Raccoon turns out to be a traitor, and then Surly saves the day, hooray the end. But the part of the story that I find always gets me thinking is the symbol of the dog whistle. The nut shop is owned by gangsters, who are using it as cover for a bank heist. They own a dog named Precious, love her, stand Precious, and early on, a dog whistle they used to train her is thrown out in the street, and Surly gets it. At first it's just there so they can get past Precious and dig their tunnel into the nut store, but as the film goes on, it becomes more of a symbol for power and control. Surly uses the whistle to control Precious, and also holds on to it as a reminder to the others that he's the one in charge. He's the one with a plan, the one who can control the dog, the only one who can give them what they need. Later, when Raccoon betrays them, he's quick to steal the whistle, which is excused as him wanting shiny things because he's a raccoon, and essentially he takes control over the situation. At the climax of the film, when Surly and Raccoon are about to go over a waterfall, the rest of the team all grab onto the whistle and to try and help pull them both up. But Raccoon is trying to pull Surly down. Surly sees that if he hangs on, then Raccoon will pull all of them over the edge, so he lets go and lets himself fall. He's fine. In the end, Surly refuses credit for saving the park with the heist, saying that the team was the one to save the park. He embraces friendship and compassion and the value of working together. Looking at the symbol of the whistle, we see that trying to hoard and steal power just ends in loneliness, selfishness, and falling off a waterfall to your death. And when you share power with each other, everyone benefits. You can save everyone. When everyone has an equal part, then everything is just better. Personally, I interpret this film as supporting democratic socialism, but I'd have to do research on that, so that's something for an actual essay. In the beginning, Andy, she's kind of a love interest, but also the most morally just character, tries to argue for Surly's right for a trial, while also handing out f food to citizens of the park after the heist begins. She's framed as a good person and who we ought to be like throughout the film, so I'd argue, based on her actions, that the movie leans towards democratic socialism. But again, I gotta actually do research on that part because I am far from an expert on that stuff. There's also a part where Raccoon says his motto is, Animals are controlled by the amount of food they have. It is our duty to keep it from them. Which is quite a motto, and I swear that has to be referencing something, but I have no idea what. If that rings a bell to anyone, please let me know. Google has always failed me. All that aside, I also just really like Buddy the Rat. I have trouble talking much in a lot of situations, and I was just really happy to see a mute character that was empathized with and treated well. I mean, not treated well by Surly for most of it, but by the writing. I appreciated that the nut job too didn't change his character, even though the movie was mostly bad. Maya Rudolph still killed it, though. Lastly, just to acknowledge this, yes, the Gundam style stuff is cringy and embarrassing, and it's hard to get through no matter how many times I watch it. But the dance Precious does is so cute. Stan Precious. <laughs>